Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 281, featuring an interview with Mr. Manuel Cousy, one of the developers behind the game Pixel Heroes Bite and Magic. Now, as you know, here at Matt Chat, I usually talk to veteran uh, veteran designers, people that have been doing this, you know, 20, 30 years. But uh, when I saw the, the the promo trailer for this game, I knew I had to get one, at least one of these guys on the show to, to uh, talk about this project. Anyway, Manuel agreed, and we've got a lot to cover. So, without further ado, here is Mr. Manuel Cousy. Hello, folks. I am here with Manuel Cousy, the composer of a company called the the Bitfather. This is a company responsible for one of the best roguelikes I've played in a long time. Certainly one of the funniest. Uh, a game called Pixel Heroes uh, Bite and Magic. How are you doing today, Manuel? Hello, Matt. I'm fine. So, you know, this game's been up since, what, February 6th, I think, is when it came out on Steam, or at least when I saw it there. And you, you had this really awesome retro trailer who, you know, if you haven't seen that, guys, go and watch the trailer uh, before you watch this interview. I think you'll get a kick out of it, but... And, you know, how, how's the game doing so far for you? Oh, I think it's fine. Um, it is our first game we have released, um, so I um, can't really say if the numbers are going so good, but uh, our publisher says it's pretty good for, this, for the beginning, for the first game, so we're happy with that. That's the publisher's Head Up, head up Games? Yeah. Is that the first time you've worked with the publisher? Yes, it's the first time we've worked with them. So what made so, you want to go with them? Sorry? So what, what, what made you choose them, and what, what exactly uh, do they do for guys? like I mean, Because you're just a three-man studio, right? Real small indie studio. I mean, have you enjoyed working with the publisher? Yes, of course. If, of course, yeah. It was on a um, small developer meeting, about 250 developers. So I don't know if they're called small. But... Um, it was quite interesting. We presented our game there um, in front of the people, and after our presentation, um, someone, um, some developer, came to us and said, "Hey, uh, I know a developer who might be interesting for you," and uh, we contacted them, and then we met with them and um, signed the contract. So it was quite easy. You were working on, you were on Desura, I think, before you got on Steam, right? Yeah, yeah. It was a um, beta version, so um, many, many people thought it was a free version of the game, but actually it was our beta test. So, and uh, we gained um, much, much um, feedback from that from the players, and so that we can now um, what to change and uh, how to improve the game and make it better. Yeah, what kind of advice did you get that you ended up implementing? Yeah, we, we gained a lot of feedback from, from the players and um, we, um, it was more on, on the balancing of the game, so um, there wasn't any, any feature we um, added for the, for the um, players, um, from, from the feedback of the players, but um, of course we added a lot of uh, features um, to, the, to the full version we hadn't in the beta um, testing um, phase, so uh, it was like the, the achievements. But it was nothing um, that came from the player, so it was all planned um, before. Yeah, I love those achievements. I just got just earned one right before we started doing this interview. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was I just finished the Goblin Camp. I got one for yeah. doing that. What's, I can't remember. The, do you remember the name of that achievement? Oh, I'm not sure. I have to look up. Big Monster Head, or it was something funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, so this is a Pixel Heroes game. You describe it on the Steam site, or on Steam, as a RPG slash roguelike. Kind of curious what, you know, what what that means exactly. Uh, with hilarious events, deadly dungeons, and some of the weirdest NPCs you will ever meet in a game. <laughs> I can definitely uh, vouch for that. Uh, so, a couple questions. Uh, one, just how did this idea come about to do this game? And second, you know, why the RPG slash roguelike? I mean, do you not consider 
a roguelike to be an RPG? Do you see them as different sorts of games? Uh, you know, and where would you put you? You know, how do you position pixel heroes in that? Um, it's hard to say. The idea originally came from from Tom. Uh, he is a lead designer, and um, um, basically, um, the idea came from from the games we love, we personally loved, and um, so and. It was um, so the, the RPG slash roguelike. It was um, based on the idea of um, what what Tom had in his mind. So um, he, he loved to play many roguelikes. He loved to play many RPGs, and um, that was the idea to to bring everything uh, together, um, all the best ideas um, from from um, playing these games and um, put them in one game. That um, we wanted to play, so it's not not uh, like okay, let's let's do a game the players want, and how to make a big budget with it, um, earn a lot of money, but only let's make a game that we would want to play. So that's the combination behind this. Yeah, I've heard that same thing. It seemed like all of the great game designers I've had on over the years, the ones that really make the great games, that's what they say. Hey, we were just making something that. You know, me and the rest of the guys in the studio were playing. We really liked this. We didn't even think about, you know, the sales or whether this would be a hit yeah. with anybody else. And it really seems a lot of uh, the major studios have this backwards, right? Yeah, great to hear <laughs> that we fit in with the other developers. <laughs> so you mentioned that you've played a lot of RPGs yourself. And, you know, it seems like from the videos, you must have played a lot of the classics. So I'm kind of wondering what... What do you consider to be the five or three, you know, three or five of your favorite uh, role-playing games of all time? Ooh, my five. Um, I think you could probably um, give me like fifty, you know, but just. <laughs> I, I can give you person, person, for my um, personal view, I can give you one. It's Diablo Two. Okay. It's uh, the game I've played many, many hours, and. Um, I, I think you can see um, many many influences on the inventory screen. So um, okay, we have the same inventory, um, but I think there are many influences on that. Um, and, and, um, yeah, hard to say which uh, games Tom played uh, when he had the game in his mind. So, uh, but but yeah, there are many. And by the way, man, I love the music in this game. I mean, you just totally nailed that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the best soundtracks I've heard in a long time. Because I'm a big chip tune oh, fan. Oh, cool. Uh, so this is just, uh, you know, a real, a nice, you know, a nice icing on the cake. Because a lot of, you know, I notice a lot of games they can do the the pixel like graphics and, you know, do that sort of, you know, authentically. But the music seldom lives up, you know, sort of matches it like that, like this game does. But I mean, this one is really well done. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I yeah. I tried to um, um, get. Uh, I wanted to be inspired by by many, uh, many some some Japanese composers like uh, Koji Kondo. Uh, I listened to many Zelda themes, uh, songs, and um, Super Mario and everything um, Final Fantasy themes. So it was in, in that time um, developing Pixie Heroes. It was the only music I heard for months, <laughs> I guess. So it was um, hearing uh, what they have done, uh, how to um, achieve this um, this retro soundtrack to be um, authentic as possible. I, mean, I think composed. it could stand along. I mean, it could stand up up along, you know, side some of those tunes. I mean, it's been so long since I played a, any kind of recent video game, right? And heard the music and walked out. You know, like the day later, still kind of hear the music and be able to remember the, the melodies and stuff. Uh, I don't know what happened. It's, it seems like game soundtracks have steadily just become more and more generic sounding. You know, there's nothing that really stands out. It's either that or it gets repetitive and annoying really quickly, right? <laughs> it's, I mean, it must be hard to, to come up with something that's catchy and memorable, but doesn't just start to repeat too much and, you know, grate on your nerves. So <laughs> how do you how do you do that? It, it, it was like um, it was yeah. I tried to find some um, 
catchy uh, music um, melodies and um, put it in it's hard to say how to, how to compose it and I well, you've got it. some some training right so you play in an orchestra or something like that uh, no I have uh, yeah, some, some musical background I play guitar in a band um, was in a choir in school even played um, some some percussion in an orchestra for not not for long but, uh, so in the little promo trailer which is you know one of my favorites gotta be the best really promo trailer I think I've seen thanks uh, but it talks in there I don't know if you to what extent are you kind of joking around about how you you know how you made the music for the game with the Commodore 64 I think and the Nintendo or the NES this... and I mean what <laughs> <laughs> you know how much of that is is uh, real and, and how much is just kind of you know yanking our chain oh it's it's uh, no nothing is real about that um so I have personally I have a stylophone um, but I um, didn't record the sound and, and, and haven't put it through a Commodore um, 64 and a Nintendo. Um, so it was basically um, all um, made by emulators and so on. I know it's kind of cheating talking about the the um, original 8-bit feeling, but uh, I think it fits. So you just were you using something like Pro Tools or GarageBand? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you like listening to it yourself, or do you have that sort of? Uh, I've had some musicians on before, and they say they say they can't stand to listen to their own stuff. <laughs> Are you uh, that way? For for some for, for some tracks, yes. For some, no. I think you know, some some good tracks for me, and some some tracks that are not so good. So I don't want to say that they're really bad tracks. Because we um, decided within the team there were bad tracks, of course, but uh, we throw them away. Just, um, if if someone said no, that's uh, not fine for me. Then okay, I will work on that and change many things, uh, even change the whole track and throw the old away. So it sounds like you had a pretty good pretty good team here. I guess yeah. you guys all get along well. There's no a lot of egos and drama or anything going on. I, I don't want to say that we don't have drama inside our team, <laughs> but I think it's uh, it's it's normal for a team, of course. And if only when I have to wait, work together for so long time, we're we're developing the game for for two years now. It's a long time, not full time job, of course. Um, yeah, but we we want, try to make it um, very democratic. So when, when the music isn't good for someone, he said, oh no, please change it in that way. Or here I have another influence for you, so listen, please listen to Final Fantasy tracks. And uh, oh, here I have um, some, some Castlevania track that might fit well. Can you do something like that? But um, the same with the graphics, of course, so, um, when it comes to... Um, oh, I don't like that hero. Um, can you give him a green suit? Something like that. Um, only with the programming, it was. Uh, I, I, I'm not a programmer. I don't any, know anything about coding. So uh, in the end, uh, Christian had to do it uh, on his own. <laughs> How did you guys meet originally? How we met? Um, Christian and me uh, know um, each other from school. So. So you and Christian go way back. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I think I know him since it's, it's over over ten years now. I know each other. And um, even at how old are you, if you don't mind my my asking? I'm twenty eight. Oh, okay. Just, just one twenty eight um, two weeks ago. Three, two, two. Wait, let's see which date it is. Eighteen days ago. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so we know each other for, for 10 years now, or over 10 years, and we started making um, our first games um, in, in school, where uh, the computer classes, or where we started making our own game. Um, yeah, um, later... What platform uh, were you doing those games on? Uh, it was only on, on, on PC. 
on very bad coding, uh, and very bad graphics. Like QBasic or something? Uh, no, no, it was a um, small strategy game, turn-based strategy game, and um, have just one map, um, building some, some units, uh, restricted to 10 units because uh, we didn't know much about programming at that time, but um, gladfully it, it developed um, for us. So. It was our first game, and um, then after after school, um, Christian studied um, informatics and, and, and made his own company um, for for making games. Then uh, after school, he decided to um, make a real time strategy game, and um, yeah, we we worked on that in a um, small team, and um, on the internet, um, Christian met uh, Tom. Um, who um, wanted to be the sound designer for that game and um, yeah that, that was how uh, we get in contact and um, from the first meeting I, I made a um, at that time I made a um, apprenticeship as a um, event technician so I'm trained in the event technician and Tom was doing his apprenticeship as a media designer and um, on our first meeting um, we talked a little bit and then we noticed, hey, we're on the same school, so we uh, should know. And um, then we met at school and, and talked about um, doing sound effects, doing music, um, and we, we decided to make an own company um, doing sound effects. And that was um, how Tom and me started doing, um, uh, yeah, we started our first company together. and. Um, with that company, we even worked for um, and it was two games um, that Christian was involved in. So that was um, we worked on several projects together before. And um, Do you remember what those games uh, were? Um, the first was um, what was it? It was called Parts in the End. It was um, developed from his original idea um, of making the um, this real-time strategy game. So. He made. He started after school and during his studies, um, and he even made um, a new lighting system as uh, his master thesis at university. So he invented it for that game. Unfortunately, it, it was never released and it was never finished. So it quite looked good, but yeah, I think it's um, hard for some some startups to to make it such big project um, at the first project. So. Yeah, and uh, then later we decided um, to, to to make um, Pixel Heroes together as our first own project we're working on. So it's not the first project that we're working together, but the first project uh, as one team, as a bit farther. All right, so what's this about Pixel Heroes cupcakes? <laughs> the cupcakes, yeah. Um, the cupcakes, yeah. The cupcakes of um, destiny. The Cupcakes of Destiny, yeah, um, it was on our first meeting, so it was uh, when, when Tom called Christian and me and said, hey, just come to my place, I have a big idea, it was uh, some some mysterious call, and I was like, okay, what's going on in his mind, and um, then um, we, we drove to, to Nettetal to visit him, and um, there he presented us the idea of making Pixel Heroes and said, I'm, I want to make a game with both of you and uh, this is my idea and um, this is how it will look and um, yeah, um, for this meeting he made some, or his wife made some cupcakes too um, with Pixel Heroes written on it. So first cupcake P and an I and... Oh wow. It was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what's yeah, up with this uh, level? Uh, I mean, uh, layman. Yeah. What's the connection there? Um, the connection is that I have made. Uh, so as I, th I don't know if you have seen the credits, uh, but um, I um, was the producer of the video and uh, I edited it, and so in the end, it was my idea. Um, I. Uh, know the band um, for, for some years 
um, um, they told me, hey, we want to do a um, cool um, music video and um, I study film and sound um, at university and said, hey, you know someone that, that study film, why not ask him? Who? Yeah, it's me. And um, then we had to find an idea for the game and I said, uh, for, the, for the video and I said, hey, I'm developing a, the game and uh, why not combine that? And, and I promise you, you will be in the um, final game then as, as well we are in the, the music video. And they said, yeah, it's a great idea, um, let's do it. So now Pixel Heroes is on the Layman video and uh, Layman is in the Pixel Heroes game. So Layman, I haven't heard, I have to admit I hadn't heard of them until I saw the video. Are they a pretty big, pretty big act or what? Pretty, no, it's not a pretty big act. Um, and, and it's a small German band and um, they're not making the big concerts. Um, but for, for the local area, they are, they, they have a name here. That's really good music. I will tell them. I, All right, I so, think they... Oh, I, go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> sorry. I, I think I um, just said, um, I think they will be happy to hear that you like it. Yeah, see if I can get one of their albums, maybe. Uh, just tell me I can send you one. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. By all means. Uh, okay, so just a couple last uh, things here. Uh, one, I was sort of curious in the video, in the promo trailer, you talked about, I think it was you, I don't know, I could be mistaken there. But somebody was talking about the perspective and how they were kind of done with the first person perspective and they showed, I think, Dungeon Master or Eye of the Beholder or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, but I was just wondering, uh, you know, what what are your thoughts, I guess, on this on the perspective of the game and the, uh, you know, even for Rogue, when I th when I think about Rogue, I think about that top-down view. Yeah, um, yeah. Sort of going room to room. So, I mean, that is definitely different. The, I guess you call this, what, a third-person perspective or side? I don't know exactly what, what do you call that even. A side-scrolling perspective, I guess? Side view. A side view. It's called in the video, I think. Uh, so what effect did that have on, the, on making the game and the sort of uh, gameplay, I suppose? I think it's um, as as told in the video. It's um, like you can see uh, everything on the same screen, so you have um, the full overview during um, the fights. And um, I think it's maybe it's the best way to do it. And I think it was influenced from from many Japanese uh, role playing games um, that you can have the, um, your heroes on the side on the one side and the enemies on the other side. Um, that's that's basically the uh, the idea behind that system. It works pretty well. You know, I have to say too, you guys uh, have really nailed that. You ever, you ever play the original Wizardry? Uh, no, I haven't played it. Yeah. Well, the oh. thing with that game is you, you know, you keep going deeper and deeper into this dungeon, right? And yeah. The only way to save the game is to get all the way back up to the top. And, okay. Uh, otherwise, I guess you're just screwed, right? Yep. So I noticed that I had that same feeling playing uh, Pixel Heroes when you get, like, the, you're almost to the boss at the end of this dungeon, and you're like, man, you know, I gotta, I gotta kill this boss and then still have enough, you know, juice left to get all the way back because you kind of make the characters go all the way back, you know, yep. up the path and everything all the way back to town. <laughs> so it kind of makes you like, oh god, I gotta get back. Uh, yeah, that's, it's kind of hard to describe it. I mean, on the one hand, you, you sort of hate that as a player, right? But on the other hand, it's really great when you finally do make it back to town. You're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Is it like yeah. that for you, playing it? Uh, yes, it's it's still the same thing for me. So, okay, I know the, um, every, um, the system behind it, but um, there are still some, some fights that are on the edge. Um, it's that whole permadeath aspect of yeah, it, I guess, that yeah, makes it so... Yeah. Because you know, with any battle, could go, you know, a couple of bad breaks and you could lose your characters and then there's no way to, like, to go back to town Yeah. Uh, in the middle of the dungeons. And what's been the... I, I kind of like that setup because, you know, it's easy when you die, you just make a new... grab some new characters, yeah. right? It's not that big of a deal, but... Have you heard from players that got... 
you know, upset about it or angry? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Um, we got some some comments in, in the Steam forum. Um, first, the players are very upset. Hey, the game is too hard. Uh, we got even got um, some some negative reviews about it. Then, but then later, the players turn and um, one even one player um, took back his negative review and um, wrote another and positive review about the game. So in, in the end, he spent 100, 120 hours in the first two weeks. So I played this game for 120 hours and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, that sort of thing. No, I always he, laugh at those uh, reviews. It's pretty funny. No, he's, uh, the, I think he's a player who loves the um, game the most of all players. Well, I noticed that, you know, the first couple of times I created a party, I didn't get very far. I think I got maybe to, I think the first party wiped before we even got to the boss. The uh, second party, I got to the boss, I think, and then died on the second dungeon. But yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with that party that you put together and at the beginning yeah. of the game, right? It, it's um, the decision of the party and the decision of the dungeon you take. So um, there are some dungeons that are harder to, to, um, to master than others. So... Basically, you have to learn. Um, yeah, it's a game about learning uh, how to um, um, to survive in, in each dungeon. So um, it's like ancient temple. You have to um, protection against confusion. So if you don't have any protection against confusion, then it will be very hard. It's not unmakeable, but it will be hard. Okay, so really the last question I have here, uh, it's about the pixel art and the style of the game. You know, this is something I find, I find it really intriguing how many games now are, and like you said in your comments uh, before, or the email that you sent about the, uh, like there's some interest in the art community, yeah. you know, in, in the sort of pixel style. So I was just kind of wondering, I guess, what are your thoughts on this the pixel art you know, in terms of uh, being used in modern games, and, you know, is that kind of a nostalgia thing? Is that an economic reality? And then also maybe we can get into why why is it that these artists and art galleries and so on and so forth are interested in this stuff? Um, I, I, I'm not sure. I personally, I love, I always love the pixel art. So um, back in the days where, when I was a child, um, I played a lot of pixel games, and even from from uh, indie uh, developers before they were called indie developers. Um, so um, I always loved it. Um, Tom always loved it, and uh, Christian always loved it. Um, so, um, but we are from the gen generation that um, grew up with it. Um, these um, arts. So I think you played it in your childhood as well, and um, so it's. Um, some kind of nostalgia and um, yeah now the the developers are the generation that uh, played these games and uh, it's a reference to their childhood maybe I never um, I always thought um, why do you need the the um, big graphics the best system for the, for a game um, the idea behind the game is um, the fun you want to have, and um, in the end, you don't need um, that the best three D graphics for for the fun. It's um, all um, makeable with two uh, D art as well. Yeah, it's My really encouraging to see that. You know, I played. Uh, I got the new Dragon Age. You know, what was it Inquisition, something like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, it's beautiful, and you know, everything looks like a postcard, but sure. I just, I get so bored playing that. Yep. <laughs> it just feel, always feels loose, like it's just kind of not, uh, I feel more like I'm just sort of a spectator than a, you know, in control of the game. Yeah. Uh, something like Pixel Heroes, though, you know exactly what's going on, you have complete control over it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know... You know, if, if I were like, okay, guys, look, here's, you know, $10 million. No. Uh, make me another Pixel Heroes, but this time it'll be, uh, <laughs> you know, everything completely modern. I, don't, I mean, would you want to change it up? 
and bring in all the 3D effects and all of that, or do you think it would? It's actually just better better off the way it is. Oh, interesting question. Um, I I can tell you a secret. I think I I'm allowed to. Um, Pixel Heroes is a 3D game. So it's uh, not a real um, 2D um, great game, but it's a 3D game. Shocking. <laughs> yeah, shocking, really. I thought using well, the Unity engine is pretty easy to uh, to do that, right? Yeah, we put. It's all about layers putting behind and um, some. Okay, it's um, 2D graphics put behind uh, in, in three dimensions. So, um, but the engine is a 3D um, engine, and um, so in the end, Pixel Heroes is a 3D game. So. Um, so maybe it's it's already with modern system. Um, okay, it's not that that high definition um, poster like uh, postcard like um, pictures, but um, I think we wouldn't change much. Um, so um, as I told you before, Christian was working on uh, um, on a um, real time strategy game um, with a own lighting system where you could have millions of, of um, light sources on the screen and, and all were um, put their own shadows on the on the floor and the walls and, and it was very very impressive and um, we made a, a demo about with I guess, about 10,000 lights on the screen and it was uh, very impressive so it was modern graphics but um, so it was not like it, it's not Possible for us, but uh, it was uh, we wanted to make that uh, the game to look that way. So um, I think if you gave us um, ten millions, uh, then we would say, okay, thank for the ten million. Um, <laughs> uh, we uh, take the the money to make more two um, D retro heroes and more two um, D retro dungeons, and uh, it would uh, look the same, I guess. What's in your? What's in the cards for the future? I, mean, I guess it's it's still kind of early. I guess with the Pixel Heroes, you have to really see how it how it's going to do ultimately, right? Yeah, yeah. But just assuming, I mean, I, it can't be doing that bad. Now, are you thinking already about doing a, another game in the same style, or do you want to do something completely different? It's hard to say at the moment. Um, we are just thinking about Pixel Heroes and uh, uh, we are very close to the uh, release on um, mobile systems like iOS and Android um, it will be just to, to make a, to make a note of it it will be released next week so um, there's some some um, steps to finish for the game and um, then we can think about doing maybe another Pixel Heroes Pixel Heroes part 2 um, we're gonna do a uh, Ouya version. Um, what what version? Ouya. Um, maybe I haven't thought about it. I can't tell you. We're just um we're thinking about um Android, iOS at the moment. It's Linux, uh, Mac, and PC. And um, next step will be thinking about some um, console version. But, this could uh, be a really good, really good game for mobile platforms because it. It seems like you could pretty much just play it all with just one one hand, right? Yeah, yeah. We uh, got some suggestions to to make uh, right click possible, or uh, even add shortcuts for the keyboard or keyboard control or controller control. But um, we try to focus um, on the the one click system so that you can use uh, it on a mobile device with just one finger. So was always the idea behind it and uh, I already played it on my phone we made uh, some Android versions um, um, in the developing um, during developing and we already tested it on Android and it was for me it was more fun to play it on mobile device so I'm really looking forward um, for the comments and after our release on mobile I always like to joke around about how I, I love games that'll let me have a you know a beer in one hand and play yeah. it with the other hand, and I have to keep putting the beer down. Uh, 
Okay, well, I guess that's about it. I am a, just kind of a fun little question here, since you are based in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you have a favorite ale or favorite beer? Um, okay, then Something I really exotic and... Uh, uh, then I have to um, support my local brewery. Um, I have to say it's uh, the Fiege Bernstein. Fiege Bernstein. Paper. Yeah, Fiege Bernstein. Fiege is a local brewery here in Bochum. Um, um, Bernstein is uh, the, the beer they... One, one beer they brew. So one brewery, it's not about making one beer, but one brewery with making many beers. Are those so pretty just, widely available, or would I have to go there to, to get one? Uh, it's uh, available here. <laughs> Maybe if I send you the Lehman uh, CD, I can put in a bottle of Lehman, uh, of Fiege Bernstein. <laughs> hey, now we're talking. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week. Uh, not quite sure what I'm going to have uh, for you guys next week. I'll probably uh, finish up an older interview series that I never got quite done. So uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be about the uh, TSI uh, company. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, almost forgot. As always, I want to thank you very, very, very much. If you have supported Matt Chat, it really means a lot to me, guys. Really, really means a lot. Uh, even though you can watch these episodes for free, of course, it takes a lot of work to make these. And I really appreciate the support you guys have shown. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, just go to the Patreon site in the show notes. And remember, guys, uh, you know, a dollar, an episode, five bucks, whatever you can afford, whatever the show is worth to you, I really appreciate it, and thank you very much. Oh, let's see, uh, what else do I... Oh, uh, while I'm thinking about it. You know, I've, I've almost caught up with my interview backlog here. It's getting uh, <laughs> you know, kind of uh, worrisome. I need to uh, get some more interviews in the can. i got a few uh, leads that I'm following uh, right now, but if you know somebody that you think would, you'd like to see on the show, uh, please let me know. Uh, you know, the <laughs> I've interviewed a lot of uh, great people, but there are plenty more out there, as you well know. So, you know, if you happen to know someone or know how I can get in touch with them, uh, that's fine. You know, it's great when people tell me, oh, why don't you interview John Carmack and so on, but, you know, <laughs> uh, some folks just don't want to be on this show, so I can't really do much uh, about that. Okay, let's see what else I've got here. Uh, some news from the Matt Cave. Uh, one of these things was sent to, uh, sent to me by Shane Stacks. Uh, Wasteland 2, you know, as you know, I'm a big fan of that game, played it all the way uh, through. Well, apparently they are releasing a sort of, uh, I don't know what to call this, a patch update, I suppose, but they're migrating it to Unity 5. And normally, they, you know, what's the big deal? Well, apparently this will mean a much better shading, so the graphics will be improved. Not really the, that big a deal to me. Uh, what is cool, though, apparently they're redoing some of their character system, uh, some of their leveling and perks or something like that. They haven't really got the details of this yet, but it, it seemed like it was newsworthy. You know, it might actually, I'm hoping that it'll be a big enough change to where it would be fun to go back and play the whole game again. So, uh, we'll see where, where that goes. Uh, also, uh, this is, uh, there's only four days left on, of, on this, but Underworld Ascendant Kickstarter, I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, they've already met their, their funding goal. I think they were hitting something like uh, 500K or 600K. Well, they've already met that goal, but they're getting close to a really cool stretch goal. And the stretch goal, I think, is something like 700,000. I mean, they're almost there. So, um, the reason I'm bringing this up is that I'm really, I'm really interested in the in the in the goal because it's a novel by Tracy Hickman, who's one of my one of my favorite authors. He uh, co-authored the Dragonlance Chronicles and Legends book with uh, Margaret Weiss. A really great book. Some of my favorites from my my teenage years. So, I mean, I'd love to read a new novel from him. So, uh, go check that out. Then, of course, on a bit of sad news, uh, Leonard Nimoy. Uh, just passed away, I think, probably a couple days ago. Uh, I'm sure you're probably like me. Uh, I mean, heck, we grew up with Star Trek, grew up with Spock. A lot of us admire him. Uh, so this was really, really sad news. I mean, he was, you know, he wasn't a young man by any means, but still. I'd always kind of hoped, to be honest with you, that, uh, you know, when it, William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy would get back together at some point, do one last sort of, you know, Star Trek-related thing, uh, thing movie or at least a cameo but I guess it wasn't meant to be uh, so that is kind of sad you know 
And what can you say? It sucks. Anyway, let's uh, wrap this up with a quotation. Oh, and uh, you know, by the way, for you guys asking about the the L segments, uh, they, they will come back. Just wanted to take a little time off from the you know from the L. Uh, there's no 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 problems or anything, but just wanted to let a little time go by uh, with that. So that should be back next week. Uh, so just stay tuned. Don't panic. Uh, the L segments are not gone for good. All right, let's wrap this up with a quotation then. And of course, I wanted to find one from Leonard Nimoy. And uh, he's got lots of great quotes, so it's kind of hard to narrow this down, but I really like this one. This seems to be kind of an off-the-cuff remark, uh, but it goes something like this. Artists don't necessarily know what they're doing. You don't necessarily know what kind of universal concept you're tapping into. See you guys next week. They said a while ago that there were always alternatives. Did I? I may have been mistaken. Well, at least I've lived long enough to hear that. <laughs> <laughs>